We have been talking about the nice properties that the Hausdorff measure satisfies, but what about the Hausdorff content HS delta? Well, the HS delta does not satisfy some of the properties we would expect from a nice measure. And to illustrate that point, it's enough to look at the subsets of the plane and H1 delta. Take a line segment A and take some covering here, the blue sets, such that H1 delta of A is pretty well approximated by the summation of diameters of EI to power one, of course. Now shift your A to a nearby B, but not too far that the sets EI still form a co covering of B as well. Therefore, the H1 delta of A union B which is on the one hand bigger than H1 delta of A, uh, because A is a subset of A union B obviously, is also less than the diameters EI added up because they form a covering of it. So as well as A, the same covering also approximates the H1 delta of the union. If H1 delta was going to be um, a measure like object, we would expect this to be H1 delta of A plus H1 delta of B. But in this case, we see that H1 delta of A union B is just equal to H1 delta of A, while H1 delta of B, which is equal to H1 delta of A, uh, is, the, as an, is, is an extra term on the other hand. Uh, and therefore, this equality absolutely fails. And uh, that illustrates the point that we cannot expect uh, H1 deltas to be measures. But does that mean that they are useless? Um, well, the answer is no. I will give a number of um, examples of the properties of these uh, H1 deltas, uh, a more detailed study of them is actually quite complex. So, number one, if we are looking at Rn and we take S to be N, then the content delta is actually equal to the Hausdorff measure for every delta, even for delta equal to infinity, which means that the there is no need to require the coverings to have diameters that go to zero. So um, the infimum of summation of diameters to power n will capture the structure of the set and it captured its n-dimensional size. Um, whether you require the coverings to be of a small diameter or not. And uh, this equals a constant multiple of the Lebesgue measure. Okay, so here for every, because well, we apply Lebesgue measure to only Lebesgue measurable sets, uh, we can say A under Rn Borel. Actually, both measures are Borel regular, so if this equality is true for Borel sets, then the outer measures are equal for all subsets. Uh, the constant C is uh, a constant that only depends on N, and it's actually a calculable one. In some textbooks, they do include this constant in the very definition of Hn, so that Hn ends up being equal to Ln. That means you make this constant C equal to one by absorbing it into the definition of Hn. And that's a convention that we will actually take when we switch to study of the, the Euclidean sets.
uh, in that case, we wish to have hn actually equal to ln without any fixing constant. So the next property, which is true in general metric spaces and is very useful, is the fact that if hn delta of a set is zero, where delta can also be the positive infinity, um, then hn of a is zero. The reverse implication is an obvious one from the definitions, but the surprising part is that um, if the content for some delta is zero, then all the hn deltas will be zero for previous ones. So this monotone picture that we had for the Hausdorff content actually becomes a constant zero function if it's going to hit the x-axis, delta axis at some point. Uh, the proof here is we, we only need to look at the extreme case because if for some delta h and delta is zero, then um, definitely h and infinity is also zero by being smaller. So we can assume then that delta is equal to infinity. S then by h and infinity of a being zero means that we can find coverings, that there exist coverings such that summation diameter EI to power S is arbitrarily small, so let's say less than epsilon. We do not begin by saying that the diameters of the sets EI are less than anything, but because of this inequality, so it follows that um, diameters of each one of these EIs are no bigger than delta, which is epsilon to power one over S. So even though we did not begin by any assumption on the diameters, it automatically follows that the diameters are indeed uh, quite small, epsilon being small, and then you take um, a positive power of that. So because uh, these coverings EI form a delta covering, we can see that HS delta with this delta of A is also less than epsilon. Um, we just write the same summation as above. Now let the epsilon go to zero to get that h s of a is zero. So that's the proof that content being zero gives uh, the full measure being zero. And usually it's easier to work with the content because you do not have to worry about the diameters of the coverings. Uh, the Hausdorff measure per se, by definition, requires um, first dealing with contents and then taking limits. So the last but not least is the fact that in many situations, HS of a set is infinity while h s infinity of a is finite. Um, this is usually due to the fact that h s infinity of a is less than actually diameter of a to power s. The reason being that you can take a to be a covering of itself and it is an admissible covering because we have infinity and there's no restriction on the diameter of coverings and therefore this inequality holds. If the diameter of A is plus infinity, then this inequality holds by default. 
and therefore if you have a bounded set then hs infinity is always a finite value while hs of a can be plus infinity in the examples where we motivated the definition of Hausdorff measure uh, we pointed out that we can have a bounded set that uh, nevertheless has infinite length in it so h1 of this set for example here can be infinite we can fit in an infinite loop into a bounded region but h1 infinity of a here will be a bounded thing and in some ap applications this becomes important one example i can give you is uh, due to Hiwash and Zimmerman where they proved an implicit function theorem for maps f that go from Euclidean space into an arbitrary metric space so to formulate a an implicit function theorem we need to talk about full rank maps but we don't have any derivative in this case and a substitute for the rank or the Jacobian was proposed to be what we call the upper density of a map at a point x. So what we do is we look at a ball of radius r centered at x and then we look at the n-dimensional Hausdorff content and not measure of this ball um, bxr is a bounded set if f is Lipschitz which was the case for that theorem then f of bxr is a bounded set and uh, therefore this hn infinity is always bounded by some uh, power of the Lipschitz constant and then you scale kind of so because the volume of the ball hn of the ball in the domain has a volume proportional to r to power n and now we have finite numbers so we can take the, the limit supreme, supremum as r goes to zero so we, this definition wouldn't have been as interesting with the Hausdorff measure in place of the Hausdorff content because it could generate infinite quantity um, each time so that, I think, is enough to convince us that we should not throw house of contents out the window because, say, house of measures are much nicer. The contents can have applications and do have applications, so um, let's like and love them too. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.